Hey everyone, welcome to Tuesday Tea. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Leanne Calderwood and I help uh, professionals in the hospitality industry with developing and amplifying their personal brands. And a big part of developing and amplifying your brand um, it has to include video nowadays. So I wanted to bring in the big guns to talk to us about video creation. We're joined today by Fanny Dunnigan with Pathlinks out of Dallas, Texas. She does a fabulous job of LinkedIn. Everyone, please welcome Fanny to Tuesday Tea. <laughs> thank you, Leanne. <laughs> thank well, you for thanks. having me. I've been wanting to have this conversation with you for a while um, because I stalk you on LinkedIn as I do, <laughs> as most people do. Um, in fact, Fanny, we have a mutual friend, Roy Kowarski in yes. Australia. I see him in the comments too. <laughs> Is he in awesome. the comments already? Or yeah. Or maybe the, that's from the previous. Okay. From the yeah. LinkedIn post. Yeah. Yes. Roy, Roy and I met through Clubhouse and he ironically is now a mentor of mine, um, mm. a mentor around mindset, just when it comes oh, to yes. everything mindset, you know, building yes. career mindset. And he's so and good at that. Yeah, he's so amazing. So when he said that he knew you, it was like, wow, small <laughs> worlds colliding. Yes, so it is. Well, look at that. I'm in the US, you're in Canada, he's in Australia. <laughs> That's like yes. the beauty of LinkedIn and connections right there. So true. So true. And and we really should get you over to Clubhouse too, Fanny, and you can <laughs> hang out with Roy and I over there. It's so much fun. Um, oh, yes. But the one thing about Clubhouse is it's audio and it's not video. And I think that's what I love so much about your content is you really draw people in with your video. Oh. And so that's why I wanted to chat with you today. You. And of course, have a cup of tea while doing yep. it. Um, <laughs> I got and, mine. Oh, oh it's good. Can I? <laughs> oh, what, I was just going to say, what do you have in there? It's coffee. Coffee with uh, oat milk and uh, agave. <laughs> oh, nice. That's how I take it. Yeah. <laughs> It's very decadent. It's not just black <laughs> coffee. So, yeah. Well, I'm sticking to tea today. I'm not much of a coffee drinker. Um, and I've got, what do I have in here? Hazelnut chocolate. So it's got a little oh. bit of a caffeine kick to kind of get me through the afternoon. It's quite delightful. I love it. Harold. Yeah. Yes. All the way from the UK. Oh, yes. That's right. This mug is, I have two of these from Harrods. And I'm anxious to start traveling again because I miss London. Where yeah. do you want to go? Where's the first place that you want to go to? Oh, my. Well, we we actually booked something really far out, but we're hoping everything's okay by then. And that is um, uh, we're thinking of going to Dubai in December. So, yeah, yeah. Oh we're very gosh. excited. Hope wow. nothing changes. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's on my bucket list and um, hopefully it works out. <laughs> well, we are going to then connect in January because I've always wanted to go to Dubai. I'd love to hear oh, how it went for you. Are you yes, taking your family? Absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We're the, the kids are older now, so they don't. I don't have to change diapers or, or yeah. chase after a toddler. So so it's all good. No, we're excited. Yeah. Oh, well, good luck and have a great time. I'm hopefully Thank we'll connect you. lots before you have to leave. Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. There's a few people I want to introduce to you in hospitality. So yeah, yes. for sure. Oh, please do. Connect. Please do. <laughs> Well, yes. you know, it's funny that we have a mutual friend named Roy, um, who is so great at the mindset stuff, um, because yeah. I kind of want to set the stage for the people watching today when it comes to video. I think what trips people up a lot in getting started is that mindset hurdle, that mindset yeah. challenge, that that knowing that they are worthy enough to be on camera. Can you yes. walk us a little bit through what some of the things we should keep in mind as we start out in video when it comes to reframing our mindset. Absolutely. And you said the top thing right there is knowing that we have worth, knowing that mm -hmm. our message needs to be heard, that um, the older I get, I, I really do feel like we all have something to say and we all have something to offer. 
And, and so starting with that is, is pivotal. Um, and then secondly, I think the thing that rears its head is, is fear, right? Secondly, is, is the fear of ridicule or disapproval or judgment if we put ourselves out there and, and this fear that sits with us. I still remember my my very first video, I was trying to promote a, a job fair and <laughs> I was so nervous. My voice was shaking. Um, my, you know, my partner had to like hold the camera because whenever I tried to do it, it was, it would shake in my hand. Um, and with that, it's, I have a hashtag that I said, hashtag do it scared, right? Like, because your first few, your first 10, your first 50, even your first hundred, you'll even like sometimes before shows, just depending on like what, what I'm coming on, um, it still has a little bit of butterfly, a little bit of like extra beating of the heart before I go on somewhere, but um, do it scared, do it anyways. Um, so number one, definitely like set your mind that you have something of value to say. Number two, do it scared. And number three, I think the goal is not, to be perfect. The goal mm. is to, to share and create value. And there's this thing where I say focus out instead of focusing in. When we focus in, we're full of like judgments for ourselves and like, am I saying it right? Did I use the right word? And we get into this like analysis paralysis in our heads. Whereas if we kind of focus out and ask ourselves like, what can I say today to really help somebody mm. on the other side? What can I do or um, mention to motivate or inspire somebody? And, and as soon as we focus out, then it totally shifts. Um, and we're not in our own, you know, cycle hamster wheel in our head, <laughs> of yeah. like, you know, head trash, right? I love what you said. What can I say to help someone on the mm -hmm. other side? Like, you're right. How many times have I failed to say that out loud when I'm about to jump on? Uh, even today's show, I don't think I said that out loud. So, you know, that's something that I need to keep in mind every single time that I film a video. I love it. That's yeah. super powerful. So now and we actually, have Leanne, do you mind me mentioning, like I saw one of your other videos the other day and I, okay. I really loved it because you were, you posted something about, um, I guess you missed two commitments and, um, oh gosh, yeah. no, but I loved how you showed up. Like you showed up so real, you took responsibility, you shared, you, um, you owned it, and then you were real and you were authentic. And, and all those things are like the perfect formula for, for the most engaging videos, right? Um, oh, so I wanted okay. to like give you a shout out about that because I oh. watched it. I'm like, man, that was good. So. Oh, thank you. You know, I, at the time I wasn't going to do a video, but I felt so compelled to make that a video post because I owed those people like the most sincere apology I could mm. create. Mm. Um, and to be honest, by making it public, it was more about finding the tips so that doesn't happen to me again. And I'm proud to say two days in, I now set timers on my phone for every single meeting, including <laughs> this one. Yeah. So about half an hour ago, I, you know, I had my pride and prejudice uh, ringtone go off <laughs> because, because I could have worked right through my commitment with you and our audience, Fanny, like mm -hmm. it's whatever yeah. it is, age, you know, the, the busy, the busyness, whatever yeah. it is, but yeah. I can't do it anymore. Like, it's just not, <laughs> it's not either. fair to the other people. Right. Agree. Like, totally yeah, agree. it's almost selfish when we do that. So, mm -hmm. well, thank you. Now, you know, so you bring up this perfect formula um, mm -hmm. and, and you don't need to use my video as an example, but like, what in your opinion is that perfect for formula? Was it the vulnerability of it? Was it the, mm -hmm fact that I shot it in my bedroom because that was the only quiet spot I could find like yeah. tell me talk to me about this formula you've got yeah I mean like sure there's the equipment side of it right um and a lot of times from the equipment side of it uh, 
a simple iPhone or smartphone mm -hmm. or Android is enough. It's so high resolution, right? And then just having good lighting. Um, it's really important, I think, for people to see our eyes, right? So mm -hmm. even though we're talking to a black dot <laughs> on our phone, right? It's still to, and you know, it takes practice, right? You're talking to mm -hmm. a black dot on, on the phone. It's so awkward at the beginning. Yeah. But the more we can do that, the more we're creating a, a connection with the audience, right? Even now, I'm just staring at a black dot on the camera, <laughs> right? But um, you know, it's it it but it creates that connection. It feels like you're mm -hmm. you're talking directly to the audience. Um, so phone, eye contact, good lighting. I just happen to have a window in front of me, um, oh, but yeah. now I have like you know ring lights and and things like that. But as long as you have like a nice, good source of light um, and uh, an audio, right? Um, you can get very cheap $20 lapel mics. Um, I've upgraded over the years to like a, a little Yeti mic. <laughs> there you go. See, yeah. <laughs> these are great. Yeah, they are. Um, and so like equipment wise, that's all you really need. Nothing elaborate, nothing expensive. Um, and then there's the content, right? Um, mm -hmm. The content side of it, I always kind of say, you know, there's there's kind of four types of content. Um, there's content to educate, where you give people tips and advice or insights or statistics, whatever it is, you're educating your audience around your expertise. So in your case, like, branding in the hospitality industry, right? What are your okay. expert tips around that, right? Okay. Um, secondly is to inform, right? Inf informational posts are like to um, tell people about an upcoming event. Oh, hey, everyone, I'm gonna be on Leanne's LinkedIn Live, right? Um, you know, come join yeah. us, right? So informational webinars you're attending, events, networking, um, conferences. I'm sure there's tons of conferences in the hospi hospitality industry. Yes. Um, so informational posts. Thirdly, um, is to inspire, mm -hmm. right? We've all seen mm -hmm. ones where somebody shares a story or to kind of lift someone up or, or maybe a challenge that we've had and then how our lessons learned, right? Kind of like yeah. your, your commitment post, right? That's an inspirational kind of post, right? Yeah. Um, and then finally, the fourth purpose is to entertain, right? A lot of people have fun and engaging kind of funny kind of posts. And, and that's that has its place in LinkedIn nowadays, right? LinkedIn has mm -hmm. become less stiff and less formal. Um, and it just depends on your audience too, you know, the degree of entertainment you want to weave in. Um, so, so those four purposes, you got your equipment, you got your kind of like your content, your purpose, and then how you show up, right? Yeah. Are you going to show up as real and authentic and sharing? Um, and there's no need to to try to be too perfect. Funny enough, like nowadays, I think content that's too slick and too perfect ends up being kind of distrustful, don't you think? I mean, like we almost distrust things that are too well put together if i mean yeah. as ironic as that sounds i don't know if you experienced that Leanne. Yeah. you know it, it's so interesting that you should say that because that i feel uh since we've been on zoom which coincided of course with the pandemic since yeah. we've gotten more comfortable with zoom you're right i don't think we're looking for perfection in videos like we used to, I feel like the imperfection is more acceptable in the in the last year. Um, my hope is that it contain it continues to be acceptable to be imperfect as we return to more professional settings and those studios. I don't know. Is that maybe I wasn't paying attention to video before that, but I kind of feel the shift happened when we all moved to a Zoom environment. Yeah. And I think there's a place for it all. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a place for perfect videos, so-called, in studios, expensive lighting, you yeah. know, 4K cameras. Sure, there, there's there's room for that. Um, but even in the same company, you could have your, 
you know, perfectly crafted, scripted corporate videos. But at the same mm -hmm. time, you can walk around on your iPhone showing behind the scenes clips, right? And people yes. love both in a way, mm -hmm. right? Like we, mm -hmm. we have all these different sides of us. We, we want the slickness and prettiness and all that. And at the same time, like, show me the real behind the scenes, right? And, and, and those, those are engaging sometimes, if not more. Um, so there, there's a place for, for it all. Um, and, and it just depends on your audience. I think the biggest mm -hmm. question to ask ourselves is who, who's my target audience? Who's my target client? Mm. Um, and ask yourself, how do they consume information? Um, I have more, you know, I have different categories of audiences. Like some are more corporate. So then my videos are more um, follow a certain system and, um, you know, details and captions and corporate colors and everything, you know, so there's like a lot of guidelines around that. Um, and then there's maybe like solopreneurs, coaches, independent consultants, yeah. and that can be a lot more casual. Um, and so it, it you just got to ask yourself, who am I serving and how do they consume information? How do they consume information? So I'm writing notes, by the way. So if <laughs> I keep looking down, um, it's oh, at good. one or two things. It's at my yeah. notepad or it's at my dog. And I'm silently begging him not to bark <laughs> while we're on the call here because he's kind oh, of under good. the table trying to get some cool air under the table. So. I have a dog too. <laughs> oh, yeah. What kind of dog is yours? Uh, golden Doodle. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a Bernie. You have. Oh, oh, like yeah. a Saint Bernard? Is that Bernese Mountain Bernese. Dog? Yeah, oh. very similar. Yeah, oh. but they all, to be honest, they all look the same. Everyone yeah. after, like, yeah, they yeah. all look the same. They've all got that cute little face and that. And they're so friendly. Nose. So friendly. Yes, he's yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Farley, Farley is my office mate, and Aww. he's been so, so fun. But sometimes during these live calls, that's when he'll get excited, or someone will walk by the window, and, mm. then, and then yeah, and then it gets yes. a little disruptive. But um, nice. you know what I want to do, Fanny? We have a question from mm -hmm. one of your LinkedIn friends, Anne. Uh, Anne yeah. wants to stand small. <laughs> oh. I think we lost Leanne in the feed somehow. Oh, did you lose my audio too? <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you popped out and then it popped back in. <laughs> well, because I've tried to remove myself. See, now I'm getting a video lesson. Oh, so I was trying it, to remove it. myself, but I didn't want to lose my audio. So I'm going to remove got myself it. again. We're testing video here, people. So it, this is it. our little stream yard trick. I'm going to remove myself. So Fanny has the whole screen. Okay, so it looks like the question, I don't hear the audio, but I guess I'll just read the question. Um, Anne said, what got you interested in video in the first place? So yeah, I, I couldn't see you and I couldn't hear you. <laughs> well, isn't that odd? I thought maybe you could still see still, oh, maybe I had to press a different, you know what, we're not going to futz with it. We're going to just <laughs> You guys are stuck with me now. Sorry about that. Oh, good. But, the power um, of life. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, trial and error in real time here, peeps. All right. So yes, Annie wants to know what got you interested in video in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Um, and quick shout out to Anne Small. She helps me a lot with my community engagement as well on, on the okay. show. Um, okay. Great, great partner of mine. Um, what got me interested in video in the first place? I don't know if I actually chose video, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'd say probably four years back, four or five years back, I was helping a local, um, a part of my business was to put together job fairs for our local community. And um, at that time, we had booked a venue and uh, had lined up all these things. And we were trying to make sure that we got enough employers and job seekers to attend the events. And at that time on Facebook, as well as LinkedIn, video was kind of like the up and coming thing. And so they were pumped, the algorithms were pumping out all kinds and giving all kinds of like um, viewership and engagement to videos. So in order for us to promote this job fair, 
the only way to kind of have mass reach <laughs> was to get on video. And so I guess I was like the, the reluctant participant to get on video, talk about our job fair and uh, stammering along the way uh, and, and get that message out there. And, and it had it ended up getting lots of reach. Um, and so I, I almost feel like I was kind of like pressured into it in order so that our job fair was not a failure and enough people heard about it. Um, but over time, I, I grew to love it. it. It gave me a great way to meet people and engage with people and, and build relationships a lot faster than if I had to like hop on a phone to try to reach somebody. Yeah. Um, I heard this great quote from, from another creator on LinkedIn, uh, Julian Placino. He said, um, you know, when you, when you create content, when you're on video, people feel like they know you before they even meet you. Um, and, and I never forgot that because it, it's so true. Like, like that's how you're going to create trust without even meeting yeah. somebody. Um, and then they either like you or don't, and that's totally fine. Um, you attract what you, um, I was just interviewing Brian Schulman on my show last week. And he yeah. always says like, you attract your vibe, right? Or you attract your tribe, right? right? And with your um, vibe. With your vibe, there you go. <laughs> I totally messed that one up. Yes, but yeah, like that's so true, right? And and those that don't connect to your vibe, that's okay because mm -hmm. it just wasn't meant to be, anyways. And they'll just scroll on by on the feed. Um, and and I think the older I get, the more I'm like, we should just we don't need to convince those that don't resonate with us. Mm -hmm. We just need to engage with those that um, that do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's more than enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, and that goes back to the, the LinkedIn or not the LinkedIn, the, the mindset piece, right. Yeah. And, you know, trying not to please everyone. If you can change the life of one person, even 1% today, then you've done your job. Yeah. Um, you know, you're never going to convince everyone of the message or, or the vibe that you bring. So yeah. I like that you attract your tribe yeah. with your vibe. That's what yeah. we're going to do. You need to get Brian Shulman yeah. on your show. Yeah. He, he's awesome. <laughs> okay. I'm writing down that name and well, that's the thing is I need to connect with Anne because she just seems like a go-getter. She has more oh, yeah. questions for you guys, by, for you, by the way, she's. <laughs> Um, I just want to show yeah. this content. So many phenomenal content tips I've I learned tell everyone from her that, and her yeah. YouTube channel. So yes, so Fanny has a YouTube channel, y'all. So um, go to YouTube, Google Fanny Dunnigan, Dunnigan, D-U-N-A-G-A-N. You will find Fanny's channel there. Um, the link is there with Anne in the um, chat. So thank you, Anne, for doing She's my awesome. job so brilliantly. <laughs> um, Trevor Houston, there's another name I want yes. to write down. Trevor Houston yes. does a great job of video. So uh, yes. Fanny, are these gentlemen, uh, Brian and Trevor, are they link LinkedInable? Because yes. you know that LinkedIn yes. is my jam. So, okay, I'm going to find them on LinkedIn. Brian okay. Schultz. Shulman is, um, and maybe Anne can tag Brian Shulman in here right now. <laughs> but um, Brian Shulman is, I, I call him the godfather of LinkedIn because he was doing video oh. like way, way back. Like he was like a beta tester for for uh, LinkedIn video. So okay. he, he has so much history around that. And, okay. and he's really built his brand around, yeah, you know, your, your vibe attracts your tribe. And, yeah. um, and then Trevor Houston, he's also an amazing content creator and he focuses in on helping job seekers. So every oh, Wednesday okay. he has this huge job networking show, like talk about a live show that gets like tons and tons of people like yeah. tuning in. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he's a great guest. Um, and then hospitality, <laughs> I mean, like there's, um, oh gosh, he's going to kill me. Um, Mark Herrera. I would love, I'm going to introduce Mark you to Mark Herrera. Herrera. Okay. Thank he you. He is in, connected with the International Association of Venue Managers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you know that organization? I know the organization. Yeah. I don't know Mark though. Okay. Awesome. And he looks after their training and safety and, oh. um, and we we've had great conversation about like 
when is it finally safe for people to return to venues and go to conferences? And, and so when, you know, when I first came across your profile, I'm like, oh, and then in your show, I'm like, oh, Mark would be great for you because he's, yes. you know, hospitality and because um, does, does venues fall under hospitality? Yes. It's not Absolutely. just hotels, right? No, yeah. it's, yeah, it's restaurants, it's bars, mm. it's anyone in that service as an experience capacity. Mm. That's what I call it anyway. And maybe Mark has a different definition, but yeah. I define hospitality as service as an experience. So service when you go to a, res res a restaurant, it's an experience, not just a meal. When you go to a hotel, mm. it's an experience, a destination, Dubai, that's not just any, you know, that. expense in your pocketbook, that's an experience. Right. So anyways, that's how yeah. I kind of define um, what it is that hospitality is and what mm. it is that people like Mark do, right? He mm. fuels those experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you're right. I want to connect with him for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, sorry, I didn't mean it to, to, to get us onto this like side no, track of, of other guests, but my head's spinning now that we got like all yeah. these people with like Don Williams, you know, want to connect Don with him. Williams. Okay. He talks all about customer experiences. Um, and, and so he's a sales coach, but like he talks about wowing your clients with magic and uh, oh. romancing your clients and customers. Oh, wow. that's a lot <laughs> of big words, magic and romance in sales. Right. You and don't then hear your, that every day. Your brain perks yeah. up when you, when yeah. you hear that. Yeah. Well, and that's, and I know we're off topic, but that's the beauty of Tuesday tea is we end up going off in these directions. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's really my, I suppose my, my why, why I wake up and do what I do is, um, I think there's so many people in hospitality who actually fall back on the traditional sales methods when mm -hmm. they should be creating an experience, even through the sales, um, uh, process to get clients in the hospitality industry. So mm -hmm. that's kind of why I do what I do is if it's an experience that we're selling, let's start the experience right at the get go. Um, yeah. And, you know, kind of put to bed those traditional sales methods that are great for other industries, but I think we could do better. So you're right, Don is someone that I want to meet <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, yeah. so your friend Anne, who is so generous with her comments, thank you, Anne, for basically carrying the thank show. Thank you, for us. Anne. Yes. So she mentioned Cam and Steve Spiro. So yes, we yes. originally met through Cameron, who's a hospitality geek like me. That's um, right. Yeah, yes. he yes. did the. Um, it was a bunch of us. There was about five of us on a panel, and mm -hmm. we were talking about branding. Actually, yep. Stephanie Saunders was there. Yep. Yep. Jonathan, who has a crazy last name, but he was delightful. He was there. And then you and me and maybe yep. maybe a fifth person. So yeah, that's yep. how we met. And then Anne follows up. She's great. Thank you, Anne. Just keep it coming, my friend. <laughs> coming. Um, who inspires you on LinkedIn and why? So let's mm -hmm. throw this one to Fanny first. Who was who inspires you when you log into LinkedIn? Gosh. Um one of the early creators uh, on LinkedIn, it, and he really blew up when, when video first came on LinkedIn, um, Quentin, oh gosh, let me find this. His, his, he goes by Just Q. That's his hashtag, oh, okay. Just Q. Just Q. Um, Quentin, there's only one Quentin. Um, and he, every time he speaks, Quentin Michaels, Alums, L L A L L U M S. Um, okay. He has this way of like, he he's a video. Oh gosh, he's everything. He's a video producer, video editor, um, mm. content creator, and and every time he speaks, it's with such truth and mm -hmm. authenticity and um, no fluff. You know, like yeah. no fluff, just like you could feel that it came from somewhere deep inside him. Um, he talked a lot about his journey of content creation, his journey of entrepreneurship, and his journey of creating content, um, coming up with ideas and all that. And um, and every time he speaks, I I listen 
and I pause my <laughs> scroll and I pause and watch because um, I, I think what he has to say is really important, um, especially for creators. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's why. And and for me, okay. like it's I, like even my own show, like it's, it's about creators with heart. I, I think mm -hmm. those are the ones that that move people the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so yeah. It's, it's funny you should use the word move. Um, uh, there's an irony to it because there's a guy that I now follow on LinkedIn where all of his video is shot uh, outdoors on his uh -huh. phone, usually when he's walking uh -huh. because his organization is called Move. Um, oh. And so it's about, you know, I need to learn more about his organization, but it, it is about um, putting people in motion and having those conversations in um, your, your networking, you're walking together wow. and networking. Um, and it's, so it's about that building that kind of community. And of course, during the pandemic, it was such a big movement, no pun intended. So, <laughs> um, so his name is Mark Waldron. And if you're interested in checking out yeah. some super raw stuff, I don't even know mm -hmm. if he has subtitles, he might, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um Mark Waldron. And then I really like, um, for actually LinkedIn tips and she, yeah. then she does them on video is Brenda Meller. She's a lot of fun. Mm. Um, she, I don't know if you guys follow Brenda, but she's, um, she's good people. She's uh, super smart, super LinkedIn savvy. And awesome. when she does a video, it's, it's pretty impactful. So I like her stuff. Um, so thanks for all these great questions. Yeah. And holy cow. I call Anne the engagement queen. <laughs> Yes. She is the engagement queen. And, and she's got a great hashtag here, voice. Yeah, your that's Brian's. Yeah. Well, Brian's that's Brian's name. hashtag. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Nanny, what's your hashtag? I have um, several. Uh, okay. One is obviously the hashtag, hashtag do it scared. Yeah, um, okay. But I finish off every show with hashtag shine your light. Um, I really think and... Um, kind of like my my tagline is um, share your message with the world through video um, because I, I think that's the it has the greatest reach and mm -hmm. and we all have something to say. I mm -hmm. really believe that. So and I would love to tackle all of Anne's comments all day long because she's awesome. But I do <laughs> want to bring it back yes. quickly to mm -hmm. um to video and for yes. people who are just getting started. Um, mm -hmm. So you've armed them with the, so now they've got the mindset toolbox. They've got some things yeah. in there that they're going to think about. And now they've made the decision to get started. What are some yeah. easy ways that beginners can just start getting themselves and sharing their voice? Yeah. One of the, I think best campaigns that ever came across LinkedIn was created by by four creators, um, Bobby Umar, Lila Smith, um, <laughs> Kira Day, and Jake Jordan. And they have a hashtag, 10 tips, 10 days. Have you heard of that yeah. campaign? Yeah. Well, Bobby and I work closely together. Oh, so oh yeah, because he's from believe. Toronto, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, oh. But I, I think... I think it's probably in its third or fourth year, but e even for my clients, I tell them if you if you want to just get started and get started quick, do the hashtag ten tips ten days challenge, and that's where from whatever your expertise is. So like you know your yours is hospitality branding and for hospitality professionals, right? Write down you know maybe based off the top ten questions that you always get asked. Um, by your clients, by your audience members. And from there, make 10 short videos, each of them just one tip each. Okay. And, and that, that immediately a lot of times sets you up as the expert in your niche and in your field. Because mm -hmm. you're basically taking the top 10 questions you always get asked. That means people are always seeking out your advice around that. And then from there, you're giving a tip or an answer to each one of those questions. Um, and then you're, you're doing it over the series of 10 days. It's like a commitment, right? And, and you just commit to it one video a day and that should, you know, 
take away a lot of the fear because because then you're just like, okay, you got a project, you have specifically what you're going to say and what you're going to do. And because it falls within your realm of expertise, you should be a lot more comfortable in it. Yeah. And, and then suddenly you have 10 pieces of content out there and, and it serves you well because it's, it's your talent, your expertise. Um, and I think content wise and video wise, that's like the quickest, easiest, surest way to set yourself up in your industry. Love it. Okay. And these videos, they, how long should they be? Mm, one, two minutes, oh, one to two easy. minutes long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like number one, you know, I'm starting the hashtag 10 tips, 10 days challenge. Today's, you know, this is the number one question I always get asked. And this is my answer to that. And then blah, 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 yes. blah, blah. And then you're done. It. Oh Next my gosh. Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, I... And yeah. Like, like what's the number one question you always get asked in your, in your industry, Leanne? Oh, wow. That is a good question. I don't even know. Um, well, no, I do know is how do I get started? That's mm. the biggest question. And I mean, it's, it's a lot to unpack in one minute, but I think, I, I mean, I think the answer quite simply is find out who it is that you are and start talking okay. about that, start mm. amplifying through that. So yeah, that's the biggest thing that I think trips people up about their brands is how to get started. So you're right. My yeah. 10 tips in 10 days is 10 simple ways that you can get started on projecting your personal brand. That would be fairly go. easy. Yeah. yeah. And one would be you have this niche, video. right? You're in this niche of hospitality yeah. and it's, yeah. I think we're all craving to travel and eat and experience things again. <laughs> we yes. want to get out. <laughs> well, it's that experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like a personal brand creates an experience for another ah. person. So yes. they experience you as well as the organization that you work with. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm passionate so about it is, is I don't want people to just be a name and a phone number anymore. I want them to be an experience yeah. for their clients and their target audience. But yeah. now we're getting off track yet again. Oh, well, Cameron. I mean, <laughs> Cameron, Cameron showed up. Here? Yes, Kate Cameron. appreciates the shout out and small. We love He's you. He's great. <laughs> oh, and here's the uh, quick, um, the spelling of Quentin's name. Thank you, Anne, yet again, um, for now being our copy editor as well, which is awesome. <laughs> like she's doing it all today. Oh, here's Sarah. Sarah, great info yeah. as always. Thanks for sharing your tips and helping others get started on video. Okay. So I do want to go back to getting started. So yes. I've gotten over my mindset hurdle. I'm going to do this 10 tips challenge. I've got my yeah. phone in hand. Yeah. I press... I get my settings so it's looking at me and I press record. Now I've got this raw video on my phone that probably needs a bit of editing. Is there one mm. app that you can recommend that people start playing around with to edit this video? Mm -hmm. um, if it's a uh, horizontal video, like if you hold your phone like this, and it uh -huh. depends, right? I, um, I think when you're starting out, you should do vertical videos just because they take okay. up more space on the feed. So it, yes. it kind of pops out on the feed a lot more. Um, so for that, it would be in shot. I N shot. In shot. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I that have used really that one. one. Yeah. yeah. That one is good. Just very simple. It's not expensive. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, in you go. Um, I've used it for kind of like horizontal videos for apps. I've used iMovie before, just something very yeah. simple. So when you're starting, mm -hmm. those apps are more than sufficient. Um, and then as you kind of progress, I, I came from the training world. I used to, you know, do training for like technology companies. And, um, and I used uh, Camtasia to edit my oh, videos. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A little more elaborate. Um, it's it's mm -hmm. kind of more of a training tool, but you can do screen recordings and edit, and you know that's that's great for I think like a medium user. Um, okay. And then I I now have editors that help me, and they use um, either Final Cut Pro or um, what's that Adobe Premiere. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that those are way too complicated for me to learn. And oh. after a while, I'm like. 
you know, <laughs> I'll just pay someone else to do it. Um, and, and, and then I can concentrate on, on content. Um, but so you can progress, right? You, you don't have to immediately go elaborate. Um, you don't immediately have to hire somebody. It just gets, depends on what stage you're at in your journey. Um, but at the beginning, iMovie and InShot is more than enough. Those apps. Awesome. Yeah. And then Braden suggested mm -hmm. Veed.io. I've never mm -hmm. heard of that, Braden. I so haven't I'm either. Check that out. Braden um, has great videos as well. He's oh, a, yeah. Um, He's a leadership coach that incorporates magic into his oh. workshops because he he has an interest in magic. So he'll do like cool tricks and um, to illustrate a point or uh, to to get something across, get a meaning across or get a story across. It's really fascinating. I had him on one of my shows. Yeah. You like magicians, Fanny. We've got Don, who's like the sales magician. And now we've got Brayden, who's who's a magician in his own right. So yeah, if you're Don't bringing we all the magic, need a little magic in our lives. We do. It's so true. It's so true. That's hilarious. Okay, Brayden, I'm going to connect with you, my friend. Yes. So. I Great want to guy. see. Oh, Cameron's gonna. Um, oh gosh, yeah. Cameron uses uh, uh, iMovie, iMovie, Canva. Yeah, oh yes, Canva. Of, yeah, we're all we all love the Canva and yeah, yeah awesome. Canva. It's um, it's so funny. Yeah, um, Cameron uh, Anne mentioned that she uses uh, clips. I use clips mm -hmm. as well and not all yeah. the time but I have used clips I want yeah. to throw one more out there this is for the medium user so I think people mm -hmm. who like Camtasia but are looking for something a bit different um I use mm -hmm. Movavi have you are you oh. familiar with Movavi mm -hmm. suite um no. I love you know I had Movavi and then I thought oh I'm gonna up my game and I'm gonna try Premiere Pro uh-huh Fanny, I almost cried. Like yeah. I didn't even make it through the 30 day free trial. I'm like, I am out of I here. I took one this. look and, and none of the buttons were intuitive. And I'm like, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I even said to my husband, I'm like, you know, I consider myself an intelligent person. I learn things quickly, but I yes. can't even like turn it on. Like it's I not couldn't intuitive. edit yeah. a picture. Like it was yeah. crazy. So yeah, I went back to Movavi and I'll never, I'll never try anything yeah. else again. So I do want to add like for um, if you have videos and you um, I, I want to stress the importance of captions um, <sighs> because uh, nowadays, you know, for full accessibility um, and, and even for people that just don't want to turn on sound, even though we're working from home, we still want to keep our phone on silent. You know, it's so important to have the, um, the captions. I use rev.com, rev.com, right? And um, in fact, now I use a lot of rev to do transcripts to kind of like cut up um, client videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and so, yeah, captions, I think is really important. It, it, some people are just visual um, readers, right? So even though, though I'm watching a video, <laughs> And maybe it's my old age, but like sometimes even when I watch movies, I'm like, I tell my husband to turn on the captions and subtitles. Yes. I'm like I missed a, I missed a word. <laughs> go back, go back. Let me you just watch the captions. <laughs> It, you know what? I do the same thing. I don't know if anybody watches Lupin. It's the uh, French show on Netflix. And you can watch it, watch that show in one of two ways. You can uh -huh. watch it where they're, they've like, dubbed over it in English, or you watch it in French and then just watch the, oh, there's my alarm going off again. See, telling me I have another commitment in 15 minutes. Um, anyways, I watch, I watch the show en Francais, but the captions are in English and I, yeah. now I know what's going on. Like I didn't know yeah. what was going on the first time I did it. I was like, who are these people? Now I know who yeah. they are. So, yeah. Um, so captions. They, yeah, Very important. they say, mm -hmm. yeah, and I use subtitle too. Um, and again, mm. coming at us with all the yes. goodness. Um, yes. They say on LinkedIn, 70% of videos, 70% of videos yeah. are actually watched in silent mode. So yes. um, yeah, now all of these apps that, that Fanny has mentioned, a lot of them have the subtitle uh, function built into them. I know Clips yes. it has subtitles. So 
Um, for your 10 tips and 10 day challenge, if, if subtitles is too much, just get your video up yeah. there. Don't worry about yeah. the subtitles, but that's step Don't two. Don't let the technicalities hold yeah. you up. Yeah. 10 tips and days is when it first came out, it, it, it was just meant to like, get it out, get it out yes. so that you can exactly. overcome your fear. Because by the time you hit your 10th video, you're, you're kind of more in the zone and you, you feel a lot more comfortable with it. Um, so so yeah. love it. Well, I'm going to encourage people. Um, yes, exactly. Cameron subtitles are better on Lupin. It's so true. It's so true. Um, so we're going to wrap up today. I'd like to talk a little bit, um, just maybe your top two common mistakes that people mm -hmm. make when mm -hmm. they're either starting out on video yeah. or they're now seasoned with video and they keep making the same mistakes. I don't know. What can you talk mm. to, what can you share in terms of mistakes that people uh, tend to make? Yeah. Um, I think a, a tactical one, like simply cause I made a lot of that mistake was like recording outside um, from, from an mm. equipment audio standpoint. Uh, that's a big mistake when stand, when you're starting out because you always have wind and then you get that whooshing sound and it just totally distorts. And even if your video is great, if your audio is not, it just throws off the whole video. So okay. yes, definitely so like a quiet indoor place to, to get started. I mean, obviously there's all kinds of equipment to manage wind, but I, I don't get into all that. Might as well just yeah. like create the environment. Um, so that's like a tactical kind of mistake that I learned from. Um, and then I think, secondly, um, worrying too much about what mm -hmm. people think yes. and um, trying to find all the perfect words to say, trying to be immaculate and <laughs> yeah. super... Um, I don't know, structured. Um, when you're starting out, you don't need all that. Um, mm -hmm. You'll you'll get to it. You'll. Mm -hmm. I, I think you when you go on a content creation journey. I think we eventually find our true voice, mm -hmm. and we finally because you're going to say stuff and you're like, oh, that sounded really fake coming out of my mouth. I really didn't want to say that. Um, I really want to say it this way. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes the only way you're going to hear it is if you say it out loud and you're like, nope, that didn't work. Um, yeah. I should really say it this way because that's more authentic to me. And so I think um, don't worry, just yeah. practice and you're not live, right? Just yes. practice. I, I was talking to, who is it? Um, a YouTuber, Amanda Horvath, and she had a great piece of advice to practice. Uh, when you're first starting out, walk around your house and pretend like you're giving a tour and, and record it yes. and, and practice that way. Like, hi, my name is Fanny Dunnigan. Welcome to my living room. This is my couch. I mean, it sounds silly, but, but it's a great way to just practice, right? Looking at things, pointing things out, saying something, having a commentary, all that. Um, so that's a great way to kind of overcome this mistake of, of trying to be too perfect or, or worrying too much about what people think. Um, and then I guess thirdly, as you kind of get into your, you know, you become a regular content creator, um, not having a plan because um, mm. it can get really overwhelming. And um, once you kind of get used to things, it's really good to have a calendar, a content mm -hmm. calendar. So that um, I tell people you, it, and it helps organize your thoughts because you might have like a hundred ideas and you don't know what to do with all of it. And you're like, oh, I should talk about this. I should talk about this and all this. If, but if you sit down and write down all the topics, then you can divide them up by like monthly and weekly themes. Like yeah. this week I'm gonna talk about, or this month I'm gonna have this theme. Um, SEOs in marketing or something. I don't know. Um, and week one, I'm going to talk all about like how to maximize your SEOs on Google. Week two, I'm going to talk about, I don't know. I don't know SEOs much. I don't know why I picked that topic, but like, <laughs> you really, <laughs> you really pick, you really break it down so that yeah. like you have a monthly theme and you have week one, 
week two, mm-hmm. week three, week four, and you just break it down from there. Um, and, and that's a great way to kind of organize your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then you're not scrambling for ideas last minute. Um, you can really like plan out months in advance and create in advance and then just roll it out, um, you know, two minute micro content week to week. I love that idea. It's And it's not even so much for the audience. They're not going to keep track of the themes, but it definitely helps with batching and our own yeah. batching and, you know, yeah. staying in the same frame of mind when you're thinking about, you know, SEO this month and dog right. training the next month or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. No, I love those ideas. Love it. Yeah. Fanny, you have given me, I'm not kidding you. I have five <laughs> pages of notes um, between you and Anne sharing all of these <laughs> tips and people to connect with. Ugh, my LinkedIn is going to be busy tonight because I'm going to connect with all of these people. Oh, um, awesome. Brayden, yeah, yeah Brayden sa- is saying it fast. Worrying is betting against yourself. Oh, oh I like how you me. said that, Brayden. I know, right? Like that's a punch to the gut if you ever heard one, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's so mm-hmm. true. Like we shouldn't be betting against ourselves. Yeah. Um, so Anne has kindly given us uh, the way to connect with you <laughs> on you, LinkedIn. Again. Thank you, Anne. Yes. But what are some other ways that people connect can connect with you and perhaps even work with you if they uh, heard something today that they really resonated with and they wanted to employ your services? Absolutely. Yeah. My website, um, P-A-T- pathlinks, P-A-T-H-L-Y-N-K-S dot com. That's a great site. I'm about to launch an online course. So there will be a link to that. Um, and so that's kind of just for anyone that wants to get started, something quick and inexpensive um, to jump on, you know, online courses. And then um, I also do individual coaching, and that's where you can work with me one on one. And then I also work with corporations where um, I'll do everything from video production to editing to content strategies and plans for, for their marketing team. So it's a whole variety of things and just depends on, on people's needs. And to think five years ago was your first time on video. And now <laughs> look at this thriving business you've built. Oh. You've got an online, I'm a big fan of online courses, as you know, because yeah. I have two. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I love it. I love your story. And, and we didn't spend enough time today talking about your story. <laughs> so maybe, Fanny, if you're up for it, we can share another cup of tea in the future. Oh, and, and I'd talk love more that. about video. Oh, I'd good. love that. Thank you. you should come on my show and then talk about yes. creating experiences in the hospitality industry. Yes. I would love that. Yes. Uh, well, thank you. You, mm-hmm. yes, let's look at our calendars yeah. and do that. And yes. thank you everyone for joining today. Anne, you're my new favorite person. You've hey. been awesome. Um, Brayden, I'm excited to learn more about you and we'll be hitting you up on LinkedIn as well. Thanks to everyone for joining Tuesday Tea with Fanny Dunnigan. I hope you are inspired to start with video, maybe even do your your own uh, 10 tips in 10 days challenge and get started sharing your voice with your community. Um, Fanny, any parting words as we kind of wrap up today? Mm, do it scared. Do it scared. Well, and, that's kind of fitting. Yeah. And shine your light, share your message with the world through video. Oh, I love that. All right, folks, you heard it from Fanny. Get out there, create a video, tag Fanny and myself in your LinkedIn videos. We'd love to see what you created. Uh, Thanks for joining us for tea. Thank you, Fanny. You have filled my cup today with (laughs) all this goodness. So I appreciate you. you and your time. My pleasure. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you uh, not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday we return um, with, I think it's Bobby Umar, ironically, oh, who's ooh, joining us. I know. That would be crazy. cool. Yes. How crazy that you know Bobby Umar. So Bobby's going to join me on July 13th. Uh, same time, same bat channel, 1 p.m. Pacific. We're talking about Bobby's year and um, the creation of the Thought Leadership Branding Club over on Clubhouse, now 13,000 members strong. Bobby built that from scratch. So we're going to talk yeah. about his journey. Thanks again, Fanny. Awesome. Thank you. Have Leanne. a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.